we were not able to meet in church for Mothering Sunday. And um, I did prepare a sermon at that time, but in lieu of what's been going on, I thought it was very appropriate perhaps to share some of my thoughts and um, words from Holy Scripture with you. The three readings that I'll be looking at are from Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, Colossians 3, 12 to 17, John 19, 25b to 27. Those are the readings that was for Madrid Sunday a few weeks ago. And I hope perhaps we can all take comfort in this. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text is taken from a gospel reading from St. John, chapter 19, verse 26b to 27. And it says, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. So simple and yet so profound. That was our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. He wasn't even thinking about himself, but he was thinking more about his mother's welfare and his own disciples. Both of them were grieving, were crying. And so what did he do? He gave them both to each other as a source of comfort. And um, in the three readings that we are looking at from Exodus, Colossians, John, in a sense it's about love, it's also about pain. It's about life itself. And it's about mostly about a mother's love and devotion. And when you look at the book of Samuel, you see the same with um, Anna, the mother of our father, the prophet Samuel. In the Old Testament reading from Exodus, which is a continuation of the story from Genesis, the new king, Pharaoh, did not know the children of Israel. He had forgotten about Joseph, who saved Egypt from that great famine. And so they saw the Israelites as nothing more but troublemakers because they had increased in numbers. And so the problem before them was, if we allow these people to increase, what will happen is they will take over our nation. And this fear drove Pharaoh and whatever else was in his mind to pass a law that all the male children of the Israelites should be killed. One of the lessons in this is one, just because the world praises you today they will not praise you tomorrow and in our Palm Sunday service we will see this in this full context and so there were two midwives she from poor who went out and they feared God so much that he did not kill these male children. There might have been others like that, but we were told about these two wonderful women. And because of that, the Lord prospered them and their household. Can you imagine how many children were killed to satisfy Pharaoh's edict? How many families grieved? The fear that one, you pregnant, Two, is it a boy or a girl, knowing what will eventually happen? Fear is contagious. Fear paralyzes. Fear can strip us of our dignity and our ability to live. For those of us who 
uh, followers of our Lord Jesus Christ who are walking through life in faith on this great pilgrimage in Christ. We are called to trust in God. So much so that the apostles prayed, Lord, increase our faith. And I pray that God Almighty will increase your faith in this difficult moment in time. God will give us all strength to see a better tomorrow. God will bring his healing into our world because we so much need it right now. Anyway, going on, back on track. It was at this period that Moses was born to his mother, Joshebeth, and Hamran, his father. And um, you can imagine that they will have kept this young baby hidden. But how do you hide a baby? Impossible. If the baby is hungry and wants to cry, the baby will cry. You can't stop a baby from gurgling, from laughing. Impossible. And there will be people who will be checking to see when you've delivered your baby or if there's a sound of a baby to check the sex of the baby. So having that boy in the house put them all in danger. And for many, there was no choice. But, again, God is gracious. And what happened was, they put the baby in a reed basket, in the river, and by God's providence, Moses was found by none other than Pharaoh's daughter, or the current Pharaoh's sister. And the sister came out and said, I know of a midwife. God put love in this woman's heart. She loved Moses and then paid the mother to look after her own son. So in the midst of darkness, at times when there is no hope, God opened doors of hope for us, of safety in the midst of danger. And so God did this for the baby Moses and for his family. But you can also understand the mother's pain, not being able to tell her son that she was the mother and not Pharaoh's <laughs> sister. But it gave them protection, it gave them an income, and so the boy grew up safe and sound and um, the rest as we know is history and that tells you a lot about a mother's sacrifice the sacrifice women in our society make on our behalf to keep family together and to all you women out there all you ladies out there your job is not finished because Many of you are called to be the anchor in the family that will hold people together in this moment of crisis. You've been doing this and um, Murdering Sunday is just a day to actually thank you for all that you do on behalf of every one of us in looking after the boys to be men, the babies to be boys, in caring even when the child leaves the house and worrying about them. I'm not taking away the bit about fathers. There is Father's Day to come. And we will celebrate that also in joy and happiness, we pray. But at times we have no choice about the circumstance or the place that we find ourselves. And we have to make the best out of it. Moses' mother taught hard and fast. And until she could find no other way out. And she was waiting for Moses' sister to come and say, Look, he's been killed. Can you imagine her joy when she got the good news? Christ is in the midst of all that we go through, in the midst of our lives, in everything that we do. Christ is always there. 
And at our darkest moment, let us not forget to place our trust in God as Moses' mother did. Yes, it can be a long, long haul. Sarah trusted in God. It took time. Hannah, for many years, prayed for the boy Samuel before she eventually had him. Miracles at times are not just instantaneous. They take a long time in being cooked, to use the word being baked. But no matter what, long before we are about to ask, God knows what is about to happen to us. After all, he made us in his image. Genesis says, let us make man in our image. The Trinity spoke, God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit to make us in his image. And he has promised never to abandon us or bring before us anything that will overcome us. And so for Moses' family, this was very true. But that is not to take away from all those families who lost their children. This is not to take away from them. Let us always remember that in Christ, everything is possible. In Christ, our darkest nights can become our brightest day. Let us not give up hope as we continue on our Christian pilgrimage. It is not so easy to be a mother, to be a parent, to be an auntie or uncle. If we look at our Lord's um, entry into the temple the first time was taken in and in Luke chapter 2 verse 21 to 40 the non Demetis the prophet Simeon's prophecy to to Mary that a sword will pierce her heart to be a mother at times is to know hardship and no matter what is to worry Every mother, auntie, or sister worries about those in their charge. In our own society, we worry about the knife crime, which thank God is gone down, and I pray it stays down. The mindless loss of lives by teenagers or teens who think that they are strong and tough, that the act of a man is to carry a knife rather than trying to use this. And for adults who also support them, shame on you. It is hard to be a mother. And guess what? Even when they are adults in their own homes, you cannot stop worrying. With the pandemic facing us, and for those who on this Mothering Sunday, as mothers have lost their children, there is almost no greater pain than that, because it's not meant to be the natural order of things, but it does happen. Now we are seeing that again with the pandemic. Parents, aunties and uncles, not even having the opportunity to say their final goodbyes. Inasmuch as women carry so much love within them in their hearts and minds, there's also that space in their heart which is full of grief and pain and worry. And it is rightly so that we are able to thank all those who are mothers to us, those who stand as mothers to us, all those women who have nurtured us, whether your teacher, your Sunday school teacher, your aunties, your, 
you know, a big sister who have stood there by you in your moment of need. Bring them to mind and thank God for their life and ministry in your life. Everyone needs a good mother. But at the same time, don't let's delude ourselves that all mothers are good mothers. We've seen incidences of mothers or parents abusing their children or committing worse to that effect, or those who stand as aunties and, un and uncles who have done worse. That is not the idea or the ideal of a good mother that we bring before you in Christ. We are talking of a mother, like a mother Mary, Anna, Sarah, who stand by their children. And so let us just thank God for all those who have been there for us in our lives. Let us think of motherhood in the sense of God, who also gave up his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will never die but, or perish, but have everlasting life. That's him Christ who came to die for you on the cross. He knows exactly the pain that we are going through as a nation in the world, the sense of loss, helplessness, hopelessness. And yet, it is in the darkest moment that we are truly, that our true nature can be found. Acts of kindness that we read about in the papers. Selfless sacrifice by people on the front line. Men and women who know that by doing something, by going to save others, they might also end up catching this virus. Let us thank God for the wonderful women and I would like to say men also who have been who have been of great influence, who have been of selfless sacrifice in their own need to serve humanity, to bring about a better world and an end to this virus. Colossians, you know, for those of us who have any grief or trouble with our children or mother. Let us, as in verse 13, learn to forgive. But forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to learn to forget. We are called to forgive. It is not optional. It's mandatory for a Christian. We say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. This is important. Let us forgive. But in remembering, it allows us not to make the same mistakes again. Not to fall into the same trap. And this is our prayer for our youth. Especially when you are young, you think the world owes you a favor. Trust me, you have to make your mark in the world. And may God strengthen all our children as they stay at home for the months to come. To give them patience and wisdom. To be able to appreciate what all their mothers and those who stand as mothers are doing for them at this difficult moment in time. Let's thank God. Let us learn to love one another. To forgive one another. Let us learn to thank God for the gift of mothers, to remember all our mothers. And for those of us whose mothers have passed away or whose mothers are just still around, old and around or young, let us bring to remembrance their memory and thank God for their lives. And for those of you who still have mothers, appreciate your mothers, love them, and um, move on. And for those of you who have mothers who have not been so good, move on with your lives. 
Let us remember that God is an eternal parent and the motherhood that we are trying to model on her is that of the love between the Trinity and unfortunately no human being can actually match up to that. So let us remember ourselves before God, remember all those who stand as mothers to us and who are mothers to us. Let us remember all their sacrifice on our behalf and let us also share that love with one another and the world around us. And so, since I didn't have a chance to thank all you ladies in church, all you women in church, I thank you for being good mothers to all those in your charge, good aunties, and may God continue to bless you in this ministry. And remember this, as Christ said to the disciple, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. The same I say to you, ladies, behold your children, all those put in your charge, and children, behold your mothers. Let us learn to live as one together in the love and peace of Christ. So I wish you all good health, joy and happiness. The grace to live in love and harmony and peace in the days, weeks, months and years ahead. And as we are all under lockdown, let us learn patience, understanding, tolerance, that no matter how long the night, daylight must always bust through. And I pray that in the days, weeks and months ahead, when we reflect back upon this moment in time, we will have cause to thank God. Let us also remember all those women who have passed away, all those mothers and women who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Let us remember those who are very poor, with no health facility, they will be the most hardest hit in our world. And let us remember that we are indeed our brother or sister's keeper. May God bless you, keep you all safe and sound. And to all you ladies, I wish you all a belated, happy Mothering Sunday. God bless you all. Amen.